Hi Cancer, my name is Gregory Scott and this is your astrology forecast for June 2015. I'm not going to do a tarot overall theme for you this month. I'm going to go much more into depth with the astrology. So um, I may spend a little bit more time with you than usual, but I really just want to give you a much more in-depth kind of insight into what happened. So usually I look at the planets and what signs they occupied and how, uh, occupy and how they move around. Um, I'm going to look at th that too, but I'm going to include a lot of the aspects, so the squares and the sextiles and the way these kind of planets mesh and mold together to give you a much more rounded view of this, okay, and to give you an overall really in-depth view of what's happening in June. So I'm going to start with the full moon, which happens on the 2nd of June, and that happens in your sixth house of daily routine and work. Uh, the full moon is always a time of blossoming and shining the light on something. And you're going to see how you can expand in your working life and how you can create more structure in your working life. And a door will open or you'll see how you can move forward. But you'll understand what the next step is during the moon. It'll be like, ding, light bulb has gone off in terms of how can I move forward with work. On a couple of days later, Venus goes into... Um, Leo in your second house and this really echoes what's just happened during this full moon period because you'll love your work and you'll have real opportunities to throw yourself into work that you genuinely care about that means that you will be working on something a project will have taken up residence in your heart and your mind and your soul and you'll be working on something that you genuinely care about there's a mystic rectangle happening in your chart on the 6th of June as well, which is a really, um, it's like a grand cross which gives great energy and drive but it makes you a little bit crazy. A mystic re rectangle gives you the talent and energy without the nutsness, okay? So there's going to be a real love for what it is you do in terms of how can I communicate my mission, my purpose in terms of work. I really feel at ease doing this. And I feel like I'm building my structure. I'm building my future in terms of career. So the penny drops for you, Cancer, in terms of your working life. Um, this looks like life purpose stuff to me. Wonderful. I mean, we're all here to do something, you know. And if, and if we're wandering around aimlessly, we feel frustrated because the creator creates. We're reflections of the creator. So if we're not creating... We get irritated, we get restless, we get discontent. Have a look at what it is you really care about around the 6th of June. I think it's going to be a really powerful time for you. There's something going on between the end of May through until the 11th of June as well. Um, for those two weeks, Jupiter, the planet of good luck and good fortune, sextiles Mars, the planet of war and um, aggression. And a sextile is a kind of harmonious connection between two planets and again that's in your second house of work and doing things and Mars is in your sector of um, spirituality but really doing service for other people and being in line with your true mission your true purpose you get very forceful and very strongly motivated around what it is you want to achieve the first two weeks of June are excellent for that and at the same time Saturn trines Venus, and it does that during the same period. So from the 31st of May through until, <coughs> excuse me, the 12th of June, so two weeks with an extra day. Um, and that, again, builds more structure in terms of your practical life. The work you're doing is going to result in you having a permanent contract or um, working the five years in the company, being a fixture in your job, um, having a, a solid, steady balance in your bank account. It creates permanence, it creates security, and it creates a sense of, whew, I can breathe, I'm looked after, I've got enough, I know what I'm doing with my work, with my life, with my money, I don't have to stress about this, I'm in a solid, safe place. So that's something that I really feel isn't going to be a concern for you, it's going to be a source of celebration for you, Cancer. Mercury comes out of retrograde on the 12th of June and it stays in Gemini all month, okay? That is in your, it's very happy in Gemini, 
because Mercury rules Gemini. And it's in your 12th house, again, of spirituality, of being of service and communicating. I think there's a real, I really get that, like, a door opens in your head. The spiritual message comes through. Dear John, this is what you're supposed to be doing for work. This is your purpose. Did, 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 like a fax in your head. You read it. You're like, yes, ding, I hear the message. I act upon it. I'm cool with it. I'm moving forward. That's really what I get, that you're completely aligned with your spiritual purpose and you're taking practical action around that. It, you're really, it's like a, it's like a fine-tuned pitchfork. You're really like an antenna Thing, like vibrating at the right frequency and you hear the things that you're meant to be hearing. The next aspect is a sextile between Mercury and Venus and that happens in the week from the 8th of June through until the 13th of June. So I'm taking you back a couple of days now. And Mercury again communication. Venus is uh, the goddess of love. Sextile is a harmonious relationship, a harmonious connection. You love what you do. You, the spirit is taking you down the path of love. And it's helping you add value to the world in a genuine loving way. And when you do that, the world adds value back to you. It's just the way it works. That's the law of the universe. What you give out, you get back. Now, some outer planets. These are the planets um, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. These move very, very slowly. And Pluto, the planet of rebirth and regeneration, has been in a square aspect to Uranus, the planet of rebellion and miracles and the unexpected, since March 2012. That square, that energy of friction between the two, comes to an end on the 13th of June. What that means for you is that you've been on a real path, on a real ambitious drive to um, achieve your to shape your working life the way you want it to be, to, to, to achieve your goal. I think you've been very ambitious. You've been very much in the mode of, if I'm going to work, I want it to be meaningful and I want to achieve what I want to achieve. I want to be someone at work. And you've been quite focused on that. And I really get that that has come to fruition now and you're almost at a completion point with that. And I think on the 13th of June, you're going to be able to sit back and say, hey, I did it. So well done. And it means that there's, um, you can relax a little bit in June. You can kind of chill. You can kind of say, I've done the hard work. Pat on the back. Well done. Give yourself a little breather. Allow yourself some downtime now that you've achieved what you want. I did a video on Saturn going into Sagittarius recently. Um, this is significant because Saturn is also an outer planet. It moves very slowly. And it's in Sagittarius for three years. Except for the next three months, 15th of June onwards through until July, August, and until the 18th of September. So pretty much three months, okay? It retrogrades back into Scorpio. And it really puts a kind of, it puts the brakes on you emotionally. It kind of um, really makes it harder to open up. Um, it also makes you less controlling, but it kind of just makes you back off a little bit emotionally. So the same thing with your desire to succeed at work. You're not now so driven to be intense, to feel, to connect on an emotional level. It's like, uh, you know, get your claws into someone. It's not that serious. And you relax a little bit around that as well. It moves forward again into Sagittarius. Um, and that have a look at that video because it, it indicates some... Some, it puts the brakes on other things then when it moves again. But I think this summer for you, unless you really want to do some in-depth emotional work, I think you ease off a little bit and you can enjoy or expect some solidity and foundation in, in terms of your feelings. The new moon happens on the 16th. And the new moon is a time of setting intentions and planting new seeds and watching them grow. And the new moon is in your 12th of spirituality in Gemini. So you've been really in the zone. What am I doing? What am I meant to do? What's spirit saying to me? I'm listening to my guides. I'm listening to my angels. That really even on the 16th of June becomes even more powerful. You 
probably will sit down and say, these are my goals for the next two months. This is what I want to achieve. Let's suck the energy in. Let's do that. Let's move forward with it and let's go for it. It's kind of a regrouping in the middle of the month. You'll start to notice that your game plan becomes even more focused, sharp and strong. And you get a second wind around the middle of the month and you move forward really uh, tirelessly. And um, I'm shaking my head because there's absolutely nothing wrong with you this month. Um, you have loads of energy, you're just moving forward and you feel driven to succeed without that obsessiveness. I have to, I have to. It's just kind of easy, natural. You're being led, you're on the journey and you're going in the right direction. Jupiter conjuncts with Venus on the 17th of June and they stay conjunct until the 14th of August, so pretty much a month. And this is, again, good news because it happens in your second house in Leo. It means that the lucky planet of good fortune combines with the goddess of love and creates real beauty and joy and expansion and harmony and uh, love in your physical romantic life. So you're not going to be mourning your finances at all. You're going to get a lot of joy and a great sense of peace from it. And I think um, all your hard work and efforts have really paid off. I think your career, where that's headed to, or your bank balance, or your prospects really reflect that. Jupiter also trines Uranus, um, and it's been doing that for a while, since March, and that comes to an end on the 22nd of June. And Uranus has been, it's ending its relationships with a lot of the other planets now, as you can tell, with Pluto, with Jupiter, and it's almost like the crazy chaos time is over. Because Uranus makes things unpredictable and it makes you, it, it tends to make you rebellious and to look at alternate ways of doing things and it puts you on a crusade mission. That really comes to an end and I think your finances now flow as a result of that energy that's come in. But again, you get less frantic about it. Finally, Mars. At the end of the month here, Mars moves into Cancer and it sits right on top of your um ascendant and it moves into your sign. I always feel that um, a sign is at its most powerful in the first five degrees and in the last five degrees. So 0 to 5 and 25 to 30 because each house is 30 degrees. Um, and I think in the middle it kind of calms down but when it first enters the sign it kind of like frizzes and, and bubbles and kind of adapts to that new energy. And particularly Mars, it's like taking um, you know those hot iron things that they or like a if they make a sword they put it in the forge and then they beat it and it's red it's like taking that and putting it in a vat of water and it steams and hisses and sizzles and with Mars going into your sign it's almost like your uh, your like need or desire to just get what it is you want just kind of frustrates you a little bit and starts to bubble up so at the end of the month just look out for you getting a little bit um, self-centered and um, focused on what it is you want and need and a little bit much. <laughs> so I think around the 20 think on the around the 25th think less is more and less of you is more because you're going to be a little bit there is potential for you to get obnoxious because you're if you don't get what you want you're going to just hiss and sizzle like Mars would in a bowl of water okay so just those days, I mean, we all have those. It doesn't mean anything except that, you know, sometimes we have to manage our feelings a little bit more. And it's just meditation, knowing that this kind of energy will pass. And just because you're a little frustrated doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It just means that Mars has gone into Cancer. On the other hand, if you notice yourself starting to feel a real power and reach within yourself, it means that Mars slots nicely into your Cancerian kind of self and that you're able to help other people, that you're able to focus on family, that you're nurturing in a very forceful way. So it could work for you, but I get that it's more likely to cause you some frustration. Okay? See how you go with that. Just be just be on your guard a little bit around the end of the month. So that's it. I hope you found that useful. No card. I've just looked at this much more in depth. If you'd like a private reading with me, then please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like a private 
I've said that. If you want to connect with me on Facebook, you can do that. It's facebook.com forward slash Gregory Scott 444. And you can send me an email. The address is readings at gregoryscott.co.uk. I think I've said some of those twice. Anyway, have a fabulous June and I will speak to you soon.